The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 20th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead. Send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out here with the indices. The Dow's up 176, and the S&P's up 15. NASDAQ 100 off 27. Russell's up 14. Semis are off 7. Tranny's up 155. New York Stock Exchange up 107. Gold's up $15. Silver's up 56 cents. Lights we crude up 55. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, it's micro strategy. 32 bucks, 4.5%. Anthem Inc., 27 or 7%. Mercado Luribe, 22, 1.5%. Charter Communications, 14 or 2%. Humana is up uh, 13 bucks, 3%. To the downside, Booking Holdings off $63. Azimil Holdings off 38. Google's down 30. Amazon down 23. Novavax off 21. So we've got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And there's four requests that have come in so far. Uh, looks like a fifth request maybe and uh, let's do this here let's uh, let me go over the general markets and then we'll go to the request line out there of course we do have call head seating so uh, that means if you do call we go right to you so let's begin by take a look at the market so what do we know right now first the question is is the Dow getting ready to break out so we have both the Dow and the ES mini so this is a daily time frame set of charts out here you've got the four equity future contracts and what you have are those consolidation patterns that you and I have been tracking so what we know right now is the upper right hand chart and the lower left hand uh, chart lower uh, yeah is uh, the Dow and the ES mini and both of them are at the top of their consolidation so the question is so logically if we're just in a consolidating market we should expect to see price begin to turn down somewhere around this area here but what happens if it's a real breakout inside of the Dow so let's go take a look at that and could this be a real breakout now the answer to that can be uh, summed up by take a look at how is the Dow trading in all of the major currencies in order to have a real breakout you know that the instrument needs to be trading higher in all the major currencies. So I'm referring to things like gold and light sweet crude and the Dow and so forth. And here we can see the Dow price in dollars, euros, yen, and pounds. In dollars, we've made a new all-time high. In euros, we've made a new all-time high. In yen, we've made a new all-time high. We did that a couple of days ago, I believe. And in pounds, we're just about to do that. This is a signal of certainly global capital flowing into the Dow, and that can sustain a rally uh, for quite a period of time. What quite a period of time? What the heck do you mean, Stebo? Well, let's try to figure that out. First, if we take a look at the uh, each of those, I've taken, taken those same charts here, 
and uh, shown you the price projections. Now, this is the measured move price projections for each of the four equity future contracts. So those are identified in yellow. These are approximate numbers. Don't hold me right to this, but we know that when we get a break of a consolidation, then that offers us a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. So back to the Dow. It's the only one right now. Well, really, the Dow and the Yes Mini flirting with those resistance levels of the top of those consolidation boxes. The Dow would be signaling a move up to 37,406 if, in fact, this is a real breakout. Well, look, we just took a look at how the Dow is trading all the major currencies out there. So that means on every trader's desk across the globe out here, they're like, I don't see anything bearish. Now we're going to take a look at some of the details to see if we can figure that out. But right now, these would be the price projection levels or the potential price projection levels on a breakout. In the case of the ES Mini, you're looking at $4,800. Well, what else can we take a look at from a tool standpoint to try to understand is the Dow breaking out? Well, one of those things would take a look at its horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, this is the weekly time frame, but this really gives us the best view of, of what the Dow is doing and prices up against. So we know that the Dow is up against, this is the Dow cash indice, is up against two levels of support. Uh, the consolidation, which was shown on the uh, daily time frame chart that we were looking at. And now in the 35,493 level, that is its monthly horizontal trading range boundary line. Now, we're only at the 20th of the month, and I don't know where the Dow is going to close at the end of the month. But if there's a close above the top of the consolidation, if there's a close above 35, just call it 35,500 out there, this is suggesting a move over time to the 39,000 level. So we have two price projection levels if there is a consolidation breakout here. One is going to be the 37,000 level. That's the move equal to the consolidation. And the second would be that next horizontal trading range boundary line. And that would take us up to the 39,068 level. If we take a look at the Dow, it's sticking here with the theme of the Dow right now. This is take a look at four different time frames and its TAS market profiles. We can see that right now on a weekly basis, the Dow is taking on the top of that weekly profile. And that's at 35,388. A close above that would be a bullish outcome. The last level of TAS market profile resistance comes from the monthly time frame, and that's up at the 35,431. 35. 431. We're trading at 497 right now. Of course, it's a monthly time frame chart, but all these would be the benchmarks or measurements that we would use to help us understand, is there a real breakout going on? And inside the Dow, the answer right now is absolutely yes. Of course, we want to see what the end of the day looks like here, but everything that we're taking a look at is pointing to a yes. Now, that is in opposition to what's going on inside the NASDAQ out here. And what I mean by that, I'm going to switch to a different set of charts as soon as I can find them. So give me just a moment. So we've got really two competing uh, patterns that are out here. The breakout inside the Dow. And then in the NDX 100, here we go. So let me change the screens. And really what I'm looking for in the NDX 100, that's the indice that is trading lower as we speak right now. And here when we take a look at the top eight holdings with inside that, represented by Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Google, NVIDIA, Facebook, and PayPal out here, we can see as we take a look at Apple, um, Apple could, uh, we don't really have a topping pattern per se out here. Uh, Apple was in a consolidation, I take that back, Apple was in a small little consolidation, uh, and it may have been making that move. It's Right now it's got a shooting star candle. So Apple, we're going to say, not sure just yet, we'll take a look at the uh, detail charts for Apple soon. But if you take a look at Microsoft, this is forming a sell the D point, or appears to be. In the case of Amazon, the same thing. Tesla has a TD9 count top. That suggests move back to 841. Google could be confirming a sell the D point as we speak right now. So could NVIDIA. Not so much in the case of Facebook and in PayPal. We'll just kind of leave that off to the side. So the NASDAQ 100 is saying, hey, maybe not so fast. And the Dow and international capital is saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at DFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to our first question. First question coming in from Nancy A. In uh, uh, what doesn't say. That's okay. Uh, Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. So that's the uh, charts that you've got on our screen. We're going to stay with these eight panel charts here for a couple of the uh, requests that have come in. So, Steve, if you could do a TD9 count analysis on Apple today, you'd appreciate it. Where is it likely to go? Um, also, could you send me a chart that I can read? The printer, okay, yeah, I can take care of that for you. So uh, we take a look at Apple right here. So if we take a look, as you start from long term, go down to short term. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, you see a Rhodes Mintum indicator, completed pattern, but price has not been able to bust below at oscillator and change line, which is printing at 145.26. If price did close below that on a monthly basis, 129.50 would be its signal to us. The weekly chart has a, a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's got wave number seven out there and um, so this could just be a counter trend rally on the weekly basis price is sitting right at the center of that uh, bearish structured weekly profile in the case of the daily time frame chart as I had mentioned earlier uh, looks to me like this is completing a measured move of a small consolidation breakout if you get a bearish reversal candle today that could be suggesting to you and I price pulls back to the top of that profile Nancy 145.19 so that's the bigger picture now let's go take a look at the intraday charts on the 195 minute chart there's 295 minute sessions in a daily cash market instrument between 9.30 and 4. And that's why we use the 195-minute time frame. So the bars that we compare are equal to each other. In this case here, we have a TD9 count top. This And we can see that the oscillator and change line changed colors, went from red to green. That suggests that price is going to target the, that line, which is currently printed at 145.76. If I look at the 130-minute chart out here, Maybe I could put an A to B equals CD. We're just going to pass that one because we've got other charts that have topping signals, such as the 65-minute. It has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. This says that uh, targets are 148.55. Let me see if that's correct. 
<laughs> I knew that wasn't correct. And 147.49. Now, the key level here, Nancy, for this time frame, 65 minutes, is 147.49. If price were to close below that, that would signal move to 143.16. The 30 minute has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price right now is trading just below the bottom of that profile. That would suggest two closes below that a move to 144.17. In the 15 minute chart, it suggested move back to 145.78. So, with regard to Apple, the daily time frame, or really its intraday charts out here, are the ones that are suggesting a further pullback that should put some additional pressure nancy inside the ndx 100 so i hope that that helps you out david h writes in and he wants to take a look at cni so let me get this fired up on the screen out here and uh of course, Nancy was asking where was Apple going to. So right now, based on the intraday charts, Nancy, uh, you know, it looks like retracement is is an order out here. So that's 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 why we just really kind of focused on that versus some upside potential. Okay, let's take a look at the CNI. So this says, can you give me your analysis on uh, trading ranges for uh, CNI? You own a small position in the stock. Got a long-term gain. Considering the gap up today, where's a good place for a stop for your recent gains? Um, how could how concerned should you be about the stock filling the gap that was created today? Well, um, let's just take a look at uh, CNI. If we look at the monthly time frame, that's in full out bullish mode. I don't see a topping signal, so long term that looks good. The weekly is suggesting the same thing out here. Uh, the daily, the gap to the upside, what has this formed? Well, this is going to become bar number six of a TD9 count. So that bar is not going to scare you with regard to that signal. It has triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. But what you need is a bearish reversal candle. So, David, the answer to your gap question, if we get some type of Rhodes Mintum indicator top, like this formed at the bottom, Rhodes Mintum indica indicator bottom, it has not formed that yet, then that would say, okay, the gap likely gets filled, price pulls back, I would say, to 124.35. That's the center of its bearish structured daily profile that price is gapped up above today, which is a bullish outcome. Come. So it looks like it still wants to head higher out there. You're saying, where do you put your stop? Um, you know, I would get concerned if you saw a clo close below the oscillator and change line. I don't know where that will be days from now. But so I'd be watching that 124.35 level. Uh, price close below that could suggest move back to 114. That's a daily time frame. Let's just take a quick peek here at some of the intraday time frame charts, see if there's any signals out here. The 195 minute is a very bullish signal. It also has triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The price is trading above a prior TD9 count uh, top. It's uh, Yesterday was uh, another TD9 count. It's negated that. That tells you about strong momentum move. I don't see anything out here to suggest uh, any real concern with regard to CNI on those intraday time frames, at least not just yet. So, David, with regard to where do you put your stop, you know what you can do is I'm not going to show the screen to you, but one of the tools might be to take the average true range over the last 10 trading sessions, that's $2.92, multiply that times a Fibonacci expansion level, 1.272 or 1.618, and make your stop that below wherever today's close would be. So that would be a way or an approach to consider. So uh, best of luck to you on CNI. As we speak right now, things look pretty good. The next thing that we're going to take a look at, or next instrument, I should say, is fuel cell. F-C-E-L is the uh, ticker symbol. And this is for Mike in New Hampshire. And Mike uh, writes in and says, fuel cell energy is looking bullish on a daily and we on the daily and weekly charts. Do your tools agree? Looking to go long on future retracement. So that's Mike in New Hampshire. So on the you said on the daily and weekly charts. So on the daily chart or the weekly chart, let's start with the weekly. On the weekly chart, I have a TD9 count. Eh, I don't really have a TD9 count, but so. You say it looks bullish. I would say that price is trading above the top of its weekly profile and price should go target its TD9 breakdown level of 1027. So you're at 813, 1027. Yeah, I would agree then. Okay, that would be a bullish outcome. Price is trading above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. It did that two days ago, but it's created uh, or it's trying to create a three river evening star that will go ahead and confirm a sell the D point. So let's take a look at this. Oops, sorry about that. Well, you don't see it on my other screen out here. Just trying to draw a line. What did I do? Here we go. So here's the line. here's the A to B point. And uh, for our purposes right now, I'm just going to move this line over to the C to D level. And so we can see it's a chain. It's attained more than the one to one area. If we get that bearish reversal candle out here, then Mike, what this is telling you, okay, you may be able to get your entry point. 
Your entry point here on the daily time frame would be somewhere between 748 and 710. 710 would be the more ideal level. That is the center of its bearish structure daily profile. That price really moved above a couple of days ago with a real sign of strength, at least a, a sign of strength from a wide-ranging bar perspective. TD9 count top on the 195-minute uh, chart. Price is testing support right now. So you want to see price close below 790, Mike, to suggest that you can get down to that 710-ish area. Looking for other signals, the 30-minute has a road cement indicator top, but it's going to be forming bar number nine as we speak. So in another four minutes, bar number nine of a TD9 count should form in fuel cell. The same thing goes for the 15-minute time frame chart. So you could see a bottom form between 130 and uh, 2 uh, with regard to fuel cell. So uh, maybe it's not going to form that evening star candle. I think you just got to wait for this to play out. Uh, but you do have that potential top, that sell the D point, Mike. So be patient. And let's see if fuel cell does find a short-term bottom uh, in the next, uh, by about 2 o'clock, I would say, would be the time. Frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Would love to hear from you folks. We get back to this break. Michael P. is taking a look at... Um, Oil, I believe it is. Yep, you're in oil. Looking to add to it on any kind of drawdown. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll take a look at those terms in just a few. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Lightspeed Crude here for Mike. His first question is, uh, he's already in, uh, he's already long oil, and he's thinking of adding here. So as we take a look at these charts out here, Mike, I'm going to caution you against adding to that position right now while price is trading at 82.97. The reason is, you'll see a TD9, I'm going to expand out the, well, I'm going to try to Let's see if this, okay, great, because uh, I was having some trouble, some issues with the system. Uh, here, Mike, I want you to see this formed a TD9 count two days ago. So that high, which is 83.18, is really going to be your key threshold level. If price closes above that, then I get the idea of adding to the position. But you have a topping signal. Uh, yeah, price pulled back this morning. But uh, if we take a look at that oscillator and chain, and this is bullish, certainly. So really, the, the signal here is neutral, neutral to bullish. It turns to bullish with a close above 83.18. So I'm not going to tell you to buy into resistance. A close above resistance would be a different story. The close above resistance would suggest to move to 86.51 or 91.41. So that's what the daily time frame chart is signaling to us. Let's take a look at the other charts. On a weekly basis, Mike, uh, you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. So that could signal to us that there's a top that could form between this week and the next two, just to get, again suggest caution. So while we have that uh, signal out here, it's still a TD9 on the daily time frame. Stevie says, no, 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 no. Don't add, not just yet. Let the market prove itself to you. Intraday charts have some topping signals. Nothing that has led to anything significant. When price did pull back this morning, it was to the breakout level of 81.08, on the, which was the TD9 breakout level for the 240. 8137 was the uh, TD9 breakout level for the 120 minute time frame chart. So support is held. But what we don't know is whether or not resistance is going to fail. So that's your question. And my, my response is from a charting perspective, I would not have you buy into resistance. I'm not asking you to sell your positions out here. Uh, but I would not have you add into resistance. So I hope that that helps you out, or at least my explanation. Your next question was about being along the Russell 2000. So let's just go take a look at its equity future charts out here. With regard to the charts that are breaking out, though, with regard to indices, Mike, it's not the Russell. It would be the Dow, which we kind of covered during that first move out here. That's where we see the flight of capital uh, coming into uh, the market and, and so that's what i would be looking at versus the russell 2000 but let's answer your question with regard to the russell and the russell's just in a big old sideways consolidation mike you can see that just by looking at the monthly chart up in the upper left you can look at that by the weekly chart that's right next to it on a daily time frame i don't really have much here uh price needs to overcome the resistance of its shooting star candle from a few days back that's up at the high of 220 22.9810 uh looks like we've got a Know what we have here let me update this real quickly um i have to do it this way 2294 2294 so you've got a td9 count top in the 30 minute chart price is testing support watch 2282.40 that support the price closes below that you're looking at 2264.90 uh the 60 minute chart has a roads momentum or is a trying trying to form a roads momentum indicator topping pattern we won't get confirmation until 2 p.m on that um, the 240 has a TD9 count top. The 120 probably does as well. No, it does not. Uh, the five hour chart has a TD9 count top as well. So I just suggest caution inside the Russell 2000. Yeah, it's had a nice move today percentage wise, but you have to keep that in context. And the context is really just with regard to its consolidation patterns out there. So, um, and your thoughts are that uh, you're long the Russell because you see both gold and oil breaking out. So oil, we know we've got that potential top there. Uh, gold has not really broken out. So let me see if I can change to the gold charts out here. Kind of get uh, kill two birds with one stone. So here are the gold charts. And in the case of gold, what uh, it's doing, it's just trading with inside its weekly profile. So no breakout there for sure. The daily, it's trading above the top of its profile, daily profile, but still not a breakout. It's got resistance level at that evening star. That was to sell the D point out here. And that's the level that really needs to get cleared. And that's out at 1801.90 out here. So, um, and maybe that's not what you were intending to say. So my apology, you know, when you get these emails, I'm trying to multitask. And maybe you're not saying that gold is breaking out. Um, because it certainly isn't breaking out just yet. Has it formed bottoms? Absolutely. A uh, weekly bottom, a daily bottom out here. So gold does look pretty good, and all the pullbacks seem to have held 
their support levels, their TD9 breakout support levels out here. Well, it was just really one of them. Uh, that was the one from yesterday. Oh, and what did Stevie do? Deleted that chart. Okay, I've just got to rebuild it uh, when I'm done with the show. So that takes care of the questions, the ones that we had. And, oh, we've got another one here from Hector and the fuel injector. So Hector wants to take a look at NVIDIA. I believe I mentioned at the beginning of the show that NVIDIA was uh, looks like it's forming a topping pattern out here. So let me get over to my top and bottom charts, our multi-time frame, NVDA. Now we'll go ahead and read Hector's question. So Hector's question goes like this. On August 19th, NVIDIA had a huge breakout, had huge breakout volume to the upside. And these charts are not going to show that, so my apology. Um, I'm going to go back to my other charts and just just to try to follow along with you. So let me get NVIDIA. I'm not going to change the screens out here. But you're saying on August the 19th, I get back to August 19th, uh, yeah, there was some big volume to the upside. I think the real breakout was probably the following day because it had wide price spread. There was kind of decent wide price spread, but from the body of the candle standpoint. But either way, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, it's got that. You've got that. On 10-4, NVIDIA pulled back down into heavy volume with a 50% lighter volume. Okay. Is NVIDIA running out of gas or taking a breather before it run? Okay, so let's just let's try to answer that question. So with regard to NVIDIA, we really won't know till the end of the day, Hector. But NVIDIA is forming a is forming a, a at least a sell to D point, maybe even a Gartley uh, a Gartley sell point potentially. So here's the A to B point out there, the A to B. Now what I'm going to do is just take that and put that towards the uh, C leg out here. And I'm not talking about C legs. I'm talking about you know the letter C. And you can see that it's attained more than the one to one level. What we have going on right now is a key reversal candle. So that no matter what, as long as NVIDIA closes one tick below its open, that would give you a bearish reversal candle. But you also have, because it was a doji yesterday, Hector, you have a bearish engulfing candle. Now, what that would suggest, if that forms, is that price will pull back and test 216.25. So before we say, hey, things are going to break out or move higher right now, the daily time frame chart is signaling there may be a timeout. And if price closes below the oscillator and change line, then when NVIDIA would pull back to would be 206.77 or should pull back to it. That's the center of the bearish structured profile out there. So your specific question, is this getting ready to run out of gas? If this were 4 p.m., our answer would be it's getting it needs to refuel. All right. And in order to refuel, it's got to get to a gas station. And that gas station right now, Hector, exists at uh, at 216.25. And if it tries to get back to 216.25 and it doesn't hold, the gas station is out of business, uh, you know, obviously due to supply issues. And therefore, it says, well, you're going to be able to get gas or NVIDIA cheaper and you can get it at about the 206.77 level. So we've got to let the day play out here. As I take a look at NVIDIA and its intraday time frame signals, the 195 minute has a TD9 count top. The 65 for Roach Mintum Indicator Top, as does the 30, as does the 15-minute chart out here. I don't see any bottoming signals just yet on those time frames. So it looks like price is headed back, well, at least to 217.77. Hector, thanks much for writing in and hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Pedro Byte's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, let's go out to uh, Massachusetts and speak with uh, Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Good, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. I believe you're calling about Renewable Energy Group, REGI. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I am. Perfect. Tell me what you're doing, how I can best help you. Well, um, first, I want to thank you. I, I, uh, I became a subscriber about over a year ago now and i've been a subscriber ever since and i really thank you because uh your system really makes sense to me um you know i tried a lot of systems but you know yours just clicked with me and uh it's really helped me and um Perfect. so you know, so i really appreciate all the help why well, thank you thank you for the kind compliments i mean that's what we're here for that's what each of us really strive to do is to is to help everybody we're on, we're all on the same team out here so it is us against them so uh, thank you very much uh, for that and for subscribing. And uh, so on renewable energy, tell me what you're doing here so I can try to help you out. Well, um, one of the things I've been trying to get better at, um, you know, so right now I, I've been tracking my trades and I'm at about 46%, you know, success rate. And um, so, um, and one of the things I've noticed is that sometimes I put my stops too close and I've had, uh, you know, in order to not, you know, lose, make it become a losing trade. Yeah. Um, and I've had some winners that have really, you know, turned into quite, um, you know, big trades, but I, I got out of them early. Okay. So I'm trying to learn from my lesson and try not to get out too early. So in this stock here, um, you know, I bought this at, um, Forty-eight seventy-five, right? And I have a stop in right now at fifty-one fifty. Um, but I'm just wondering where you would place your stop on this. So as we take a look at this screen here, uh, first we want to try to understand where is something trading in relation to, to support or resistance. And on the daily time frame, price is trading above resistance. That's at fifty-three ninety-seven. So one level to consider for your stop. So there'd be a couple of different ways you could look at it. One uh, is to use, just as I had mentioned uh, in the last segment, you can take the average true range, which it shows here at the uh, bottom of my chart on the daily time frame, left hand side, and that's currently two dollars and twenty one cents. So you can take two twenty one. I would multiply that times one point six one eight. 
I don't know what that comes to. I'm just going to say four bucks right now. And uh, your stop would be four dollars below today's close. If it were about four dollars, it's kind of similar to where your stop is at right now. So that would be one way to do it. And the thought process there, Jim, is that if uh, the reason why we use an expansion, we say, OK, the last 10 days, the average movement is 221. If it's going to do a movement that's an expansion of that level, there may be something else going on. And that's a reason to have your stop there. Another place to look at would be logical support levels. And on a daily time frame for REGI, that would be somewhere below 50.55. Now, the reason we use that 50.55, this is a bullish structure daily profile. So price ought to find support on any retracement in the 50.55 to 51.92 level. So I wouldn't put it at 50. 54 as an example you know I'd have it somewhere below that level because if there was a close below that level not an intraday move below it but a close below that level uh, then that would tell us that there's something else that's going on so any questions about that so far uh, no that sounds good okay so that's the daily time frame chart the weekly time frame chart because we like to have an understanding of what what are the messages coming here and we'll take a look at the weekly and the monthly the monthly chart shows us that price found support at 45.54, and that's the very right-hand panel, and that's the bottom of its profile as well. So that becomes another level for you to take a look at, although I think that would be below your entry area, and that would violate letting a winner turn into a loser. So I wouldn't recommend that, but just simply trying to, what you want to do here is objectively understand where is support and resistance. And since I don't create these support and resistance lines here, these task market profiles, uh, I consider that to be very objective. We get to see how they actually work out here. On a weekly basis, what you would like to see is you would like to see REGI close above 54.33. You're at 54.39 right now. Now, if it closes above this on Friday and then closes above it again next week, that would be a very bullish sign. And that would then suggest a move to 63.40. Where 63.40 comes in, Jim, it comes now back to the monthly time frame. And that's the center of its monthly profile. So any questions about that so far? Uh, no, no, that makes sense. Okay. Have I have I so far answered your question about the stop, though, as far as where to yeah, place Yeah, I, I, I have. I, I don't, on my system, I don't have TAS market profiles. So sure. That's why I, it's good to know. Absolutely. That's why you just, you know, send me an email. I'll send you a chart with them or, or what have you, you know, on the instruments that you're taking a look at uh, for that. So now I've switched over uh, to my eight panel chart out here. And on the eight panel chart, we just start with the monthly. We can see this formed a TD9 count top. It was bar number eight. It was also road's momentum indicator top. When you form a top, it should really take price back to support. If support holds, then there's nothing broken here. It was just a normal move back to support. And that's really the message from the monthly time frame. We sort of covered that by taking a look at how price came back to that profile. So from a long-term standpoint, this has done what it was supposed to do. A close below 45.54 would say 22.59 is where you could pick it up. I don't have much information on the weekly time frame chart, so we'll just simply bypass that. We go take a look at the daily. This bottom with a TD9 count pattern as well as a road's momentum indicator signal, so you like that. Uh, price right now has a TD9 count top. I'm going to expand out the daily, to, uh, the daily time frame chart. So bar number nine or the bar after bar number nine, in this case here, it's the bar after nine. That's the high of the TD9 count, and that high was at 55.89. And only a close above that would negate that signal and say price is getting ready to move to the upside. Now, to the upside here would be 57.96. I am not at all suggesting that you sell, so I want to make sure. Even though you've got a, a topping pattern out here, what price has also done is pulled back and tested support. In this case here, the oscillator and change line changed colors shortly after that TD9 count top, and two days ago was a bullish test and rejection of that line. So now, because we have a TD9 count top and support that is held, uh, Renewable Energy Group is really in kind of a neutral position. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So I wouldn't sell it uh, here, but it does say if price closed below 52.85 or thereabouts, then that's going to say, okay, we're probably headed to the 51.92 to 50.55 level. Again, that bullish structured area of the daily profile. So back to the stop. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking your average true range, multiplying that times 1.618, and adjusting that to something below uh, to that uh, to today's close, less that amount, and that's where a place where you can put the stop as well.
And that's going to be below that uh, green oscillator and change line on the daily time frame. Uh, as I just take a look at the other charts out here, the intraday signals, um, I see a couple of topping patterns, but no levels of support that have really broken out here to, to, to worry about. So any other information that I can provide to you on our EGI? No, no, that, that sounds good. I, uh, I use the TD9 counts and the oscillator on change line, and that, that's really helped um, Perfect. You know, Perfect. my trading. So um, well, I, I appreciate I, the advice uh, and, um, and all the advice I, you give you know, every day. Well, thank you, and thanks for being a shining beacon of light in Stevie's day today. So uh, best of luck to you, and uh, please uh, you know, reach out to me on my, e my email if you need any of these levels, all right? Okay, thank you. You bet. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be back in just a few. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Our next question by email coming in. This is coming in from uh, Susanna. And Susanna wants to take a look at Marathon Oil Group, I believe. So let's go uh, take a look at this. M-A-R-A -A is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Uh, or Marathon Digital Holdings is the uh, ticker symbol, or is the, is the company. Would you please do your analysis for Mara? I'm debating if it 
is a sell or add your long. So what we can see here is this has attained its one to one price projection level. It's doing that today. And that's at the 54.91 level out here. That doesn't mean that you sell. The retracement was about a 60% retracement. Price along the inside of the C to D leg out. Oh, she doesn't have this screen. Where? What screen is showing? Hold on. Sorry about that. Thanks, Bill. There we go. So there's the chart for Marathon Digital Holdings. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern, very clear. Uh, but uh, Susanna, I want you to also notice that the move along the C to D leg, much stronger than the A to B leg. It's on the left side, the strong side. And this is suggesting to move up to at least the 1.272 area. And that's at 61.54. Now, if a bearish reversal candle forms, and today's candle is not a bearish reversal candle, at least not yet, um, then that would be a different message. But that's not the message as we speak. Now, price is running into resistance. Prior highs out here, if we take a look at the uh, week, uh, the monthly time frame chart, you can see, you know, this is most certainly an area of resistance. So I would not suggest that you add at a resistance level or potential resistance level, even though I'm suggesting to you that price is likely to add higher. It's just simply out of an abundance of caution. You're already long, so I don't see a reason you were asking, should you sell? So I wanted to answer that question uh, that at this stage here, I don't see the reason to sell, but we'll switch over to my eight background panel charts and see what they have to say. If there's any additional information. In other words, is there some kind of short term change in trend signal out here? Well, the shortest term time frame that you and I would use Susanna, would be 15 minutes. This formed a TD9 count top price pulls back and test and rejects that breakout level 52.88. Is that the end of the show? We're out of time. We need more time, folks. Sorry about that. Hey, have a wonderful Wednesday, and uh, we'll do this again tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Have a great day, folks.